Hello guys, welcome back to another Fallout 4 console mod video. I've been asked a lot in the last week how you should be sorting your mods in order to get them to work in your load order, and there is a basic guide you should follow on the exact way to structure your load order for best practices, and I'll share that with you in this video. However, it's not straightforward as you have several issues you will run into. One, the new update has broken mods, mods will conflict with other mods, and determining what category a mod falls into will also be tough sometimes. So your best bet is to follow these steps and sort your mods into categories. If a mod is not working, you can throw it on top of your load order. Sometimes that's the only way for it to work, so long as it doesn't affect any other mods, it's fine. If mods are still broken after that, then you'll need to disable mods and activate them one at a time until you find the one causing the problems. And sometimes it is surprising which mods are causing problems for other mods. Lastly, you'll need to sort your mods in order, well, in the different categories. So I have three or four lighting mods and they overlap each other in certain areas, but in a certain order, they should all work fine together. Lastly, this is only a guide and not 100% required to get mods to work. I mean, my own load order is a mess currently. However, that's because I have to keep permanent mods installed at the same time, test out a bunch of different mods for making these videos. And so things get rearranged and moved about in order to get mods to work. And despite all of this, my mods currently all work together, despite not being in the ideal load order. So following strict load order is not always required, but if you're having issues with mods or you want to avoid running into issues with mods, then you should follow this guide. Let's take a look. At the very top of the load order then should be master files. A master mod is a data file whose record must be read by the game first before any other mod touches those records. Now, fortunately, these mods usually automatically jump to the top of the load order and they can't be moved from there. When sorting multiple master files, just use the same order as the rest of this list we're about to go over. So the first type of mod should be master files, but you shouldn't really have to sort them by yourself as they'll automatically go to the top. Next, we have fast start mods, any type of mod that skips the start of the game or skips straight to a certain point in the story. Faction overhaul mods. And this especially means anything that alters an enemy's leveled list. A leveled list contains a number of entries, for example, different enemies, different weapons, or different loot items. And the game uses these lists to decide what enemy or item to spawn in specific areas. So if a mod alters anything to do with factions, and especially if it alters anything to do with factions, levels, weapons, armors as well, then this is where this mod goes. And I understand though, it's difficult to understand if your mod will do this or not. AI overhaul mods, this is easy because most mods with AI changes will tell you in the title or the description. Next, we have new world space mods, any mod that adds in new landmasses to the game. New faction mods, any mod that adds in a faction to the game that doesn't already exist. Vanilla quest edits, including survival mods, workshops, companion overhauls, basically any mod as well that fixes the issues with vanilla game quests, although most people are using the unofficial patch for most of those. Settlement building mods, including powered objects, assignable objects, and decorations, that's self-explanatory. And then underneath this, you can have settlement building mods, including new menus, scripting, required settlement menu manager, basically anything to do with settlements that's not adding in new objects. Gameplay change mods is next, including game settings, survival mode, perks, spells, value tweaks. Although keep in mind, some mods that alter games majorly, such as to survival mode, settlements or followers, with hard edits to the scripts will need to be placed higher in the load order. But as a general rule, they will go in this position. Next, we have new NPC mods, including pets and followers, that's self-explanatory. Then we have new NPC mods, including settlers and other types of NPCs. Underneath this, you can place your audio mods, including ambient soundtracks, combat soundtracks, radio stations, etc. Underneath this, we have visual mods and atmospheric mods, including weathers, foliage, and textures. Now, it's usually recommended only to use one type of mod to avoid conflicts with these types of ones. But personally, I like to use multiple ones to use parts from each of them to get the best possible looking game. And I think my game is pretty good looking and works pretty well, but it will require a lot of trial and error for you to do this kind of thing, to have multiple of the same types of visual mods to work together. So keep that in mind. Next, vanilla settlement mods, including settlement border extensions, no combat borders, etc. Mods that implement changes to the workshop paint script or the workshop workbench as well. Sorting mods, any item that alters the way items are sorted in game, that's pretty self-explanatory. HUD mods, including camera tweaks, HUD framework, fall user interface, and scopes, and so on. 
So if it changes the HUD or the camera or the on-screen visuals, it goes here. Character model replacers including player character, NPCs and creatures. Of course this includes anything that changes the player, not just their body, but includes hair mods, eyes, skin and other stuff similar to that. Next we have pit wire replacers. Then we have map mods, including map replacers or things that change the colour of maps. Underneath this, you should place any of your weapon, armour and clothing mods. Next we have crafting mods, including crafting frameworks, benches and stuff like that. Essentially any mod that requires crafting, including weapons and armours, if your mod adds them to be crafted in the game. And if the mod adds new crafting benches, it also goes here for other things as well. These types of mod are usually quite complicated because they overlap with other types of categories. So it's best just to remember, if you add a mod and you have to craft everything at the workbench, then it will go here. Or it adds in new workbenches. New settlement mods goes underneath this, adds a currently non-existent settlement to the game, which is different to the one that adds in new landmasses. This one simply adds in to the main commonwealth area a new settlement that didn't previously exist. Underneath this, you can do something similar by adding in the new player homes. Next, we have new quest mods. Any mod that adds in new quests to the game that don't currently exist. And again, I understand that these types of mods are usually part of a bigger mod. For example, one that adds in new NPCs to the game usually has one that adds in new quests to the game. So you might have to do a bit of kajigring to get that to work. Next we have weapon, armor, and clothing framework overhauls, and essentially any mod that overhauls the look of weapons or armors, or adds in new components for weapons and armors, including weapon mods, or new types of ammo, anything to do with weapon sounds and animations, that kind of thing will go here. Last but not least, we have any type of scrapping mod or cleaning mod that will improve the looks of settlements, that type of thing. So that is the basic of your load order in Fallout 4, and you should try your best to add them into the order if you can, and like I mentioned, it isn't always possible, so you will have to do a little bit of rearranging and use some common sense. Also, if a mod is not working, it's okay to try and place it at the top of the load order to try and get it to work. And if it's not conflicting with other mods, then simply leave it there. Also, if you check the description, I have put a recap of the load order for you to easily look at and follow for yourself if you don't want to rewatch the entire video every time. Anyway, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.